There's no such thing as news. There is no such thing as news. What is news? It is nothing. It can be a cat in a tree or someone dug a hole. It's not news. What is the difference between you casually chatting with a friend and a huge TV station's main news show? Context only. Just the narrative. The story that's being told. One of the absolute biggest misconceptions about mass media news programs is that they simply report on facts. In a sense, it's easy for us to see this because we know each media organization has its own style and taste and reports on different meanings and sometimes even different content. But what we forget is that every single aspect of what is being presented to us is highly poured over, micromanaged, trimmed and tailored to get us to receive the message. But what is the message? This is where everything we thought we knew about news goes out the window. Even who we call objective media outlets still decide what they will report on. Whether it is the weather in your neighborhood or guerrilla war tactics on the other side of the planet, it is all a choice to get us to take on a certain perspective, a way of thinking about and viewing the world, a way of viewing other humans and a way of perceiving ourselves. This is where it all gets missed. The Indian media is well known to be heavily foreign owned. Then what is the message they are sending? Too many incidents document the anti-Hindu bias and this week is no exception. Three murdered from Juna Akara this week. Two were well known and respected sadhus the mass media cult tried to pass off as child lifters, organ harvesters and thieves interchangeably. In 2008, Vedanta Keshari Swami Lakshmanan Saraswati had faced assassins on nearly a dozen occasions already and the day before he was murdered, he filed a special request for increased security. As the assassins were so arrogant in their intention to murder him, they barely cared to keep the secret. He with four other monks were shot to death and hacked with axes and the conspirators were never tried not really even ever investigated. In 2009, Bhagavan Nityananda led a huge grassroots padayatra across South India, which began liberating many poor Hindus from decades of political, economic and cultural oppression. In 2010, the mass media cult launched an all out assault with guns blazing and burned him to death. It was the plan. The media first made a fake video about him and then they charged him for the faked actions depicted in the fake video. Like creating a cartoon character with oil paints then holding them responsible for real world crimes. Only in this case there was never even any crime. None of it ever happened. And this they call a prosecution case. A case which in fact till date has never been able to muster even a fake rape victim to go along with the original fake rape charge sheet. Yet they cry Bhagavan Nityananda must come face the prosecution as though three false arrests, multiple poisonings, extensive torture while detained and oh yes, being burned alive was not enough to fulfill their fake case. Their prosecution has not yet been justified. It's however been clearly exposed as persecution. And so is the ebb and flow of foreign media interests deflating the lungs of Hindus in India. It goes on and on. It's not new only faces change at a very rapid pace even these days. Join the solution. Pledge your solution to breathe life back into Hindus and call out the atrocities on Hindu women and children and all great saints. Explore the links below to apply the solution for yourself and strengthen it for your next generation.